everybody back to Multiplex Movie Melee and the Platinum Ticket Tournament 2024. I am your host, Payson, the Cinemaster Johnson. Joining me to co-host is Dylan Van Thine. Dylan, Tony Durso versus Zachary Shelton, the three seed versus the 10 seed. How are you feeling tonight? Feeling good. Very excited. Uh, this is a very exciting tournament. This is the, uh, but peek behind the curtain, this is the first match we're shooting of it. And this is for to crown the inaugural champion since Caleb Boatman uh, vacated the belt at the end of last season. So very exciting. We got some very strong competitors here. Uh, Zachary, uh, he had a very strong breakout performance, I think, in his uh, play-in match that he won last year. Uh, has had some back bad luck since then. But I think when he's firing on all cylinders, he can be a major threat. And Tony is like he's become a staple in the past few years. He's just one of the best players to not win a belt. So I'm very excited to see who wins today. Should be a good, good one. Yeah, like you said, uh, Boatman, God bless his soul. Uh, he is no longer with us. But yeah, I think any of the 12 competitors are hungry to get that belt. And yeah, I, I like you said, I think Tony is one of the scarier competitors out there and one of the more underrated competitors. Zachary, um, he wants to get his... Uh, he, he he wants to cut his tooth in. Uh, I think we just move right into pre-match interviews, uh, starting with uh, Zach. Uh, you want to bring him in? Mm -hmm. uh, Zachary uh, got selected as one of the 12 competitors for the Platinum Ticket Tournament. Uh, how are you feeling coming in to face Tony tonight? Uh, good. Uh, I was just a... – first off, I'm excited to be uh, selected. I'm always – ready to compete, always looking to have fun, and we'll see what kind of questions come up. Uh, I like that attitude. Uh, Dylan, I just say we uh, head right into our uh, next competitor with our interviews. Uh, Tony, Tony Durso, uh, this is your, I believe, is this your fourth year competing in uh, Melee? I believe since 2021, you debuted the same year me and Dylan debuted. Yeah. Uh, probably uh, when you got selected, you were like, this is it. Now is the chance. Uh, how are you feeling coming in tonight? I'm feeling good. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, just, a. it's an opportunity that you can't really, uh, let go to waste, frankly, because there's too many excellent players to, uh, get to a championship. So obviously we just got to make the most of uh, the opportunity we're given. That is completely fair. Well, I can tell you, uh, Tony, as every writer, you give uh, all of us writers fear because all of us have fear as when if your strength category is spun, oh shit, we got to pronounce all these names. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Dylan, I say we had right into round one. How do you feel? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, round one is going to work like this. Competitors will get eight questions from eight different categories with one point apiece. They will have 15 seconds to write their answers on, they, on their board. And if they get all eight questions right, they will receive a bonus question. Competitors will have three peats and one challenge throughout the duration of the match. Competitors, any questions? No. Nope. Well, in that case, your first question will be coming to you in the category of directors. Who made their directorial debut with the 1996 film Bottle Rocket? I just realized I didn't even bring this up to you before the call. Uh... Is this the fir your first match from your new digs there? Yeah, yeah this is now my, my place. Uh, funny thing about the movie, uh, maybe I'll uh, shoot some bottle rockets down at my neighbors like the hooligan I am. Nice. Five, four, three, two, one. But yes, this is my new apartment. Uh, pens down. Zach, we will go to you. Wes Anderson. And we will go to Tony. Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson is correct. All right, so then your next question will come in the category of comedies. Who stars as Tom Hanks's brother in the 1983 film Splash? And I'm just going to correct something. It is the 1984 film uh, Splash. Mm. Just a slight typo, but happy I got it. the 1974 oh, yeah. one. Ooh. <laughs> uh, well, I was thinking of the 2024 one that's coming Ooh. out this year. Wait, is there one? No, not oh, okay. five or... <laughs> Three. I'm so two, out of the loop. <laughs> one. Cody will go to you. I got nothing. And we will go to Zach. John Candy. John Candy is correct. Zach taking a one point lead. As we move into your third question, the category of horror. In the 1992 Stephen King adaptation, Sleepwalkers, what animal is the only weakness of the shape shifting vampires, Charles and Mary? Do you sleep well, Dylan? Sometimes. 
Fair, yeah. I went through a really bad, like, series of, like, insomnia last year randomly for no reason. I don't know what it was. I just, like, couldn't fall asleep one night. I was like, ah! That is scary. Uh, yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Zach, we'll go to you. I guess cats. And we will go to Tony. I also said cat. Cats, cat, we'll accept both. Oh, all right. So your next question will come in the category of sci-fi slash fantasy. It doesn't say that in the doc, but I'll add it. Uh, in 2001, A Space Odyssey, Discovery 1 is bound for what planet in our solar system? That was a weird way I delivered A Space Odyssey there. Oh, <laughs> Makes it seem more dramatic, like the dramatic uh, uh, aspect of the movie. Yes, absolutely. We need to we need to host some matches in gorilla costumes to uh reference <laughs> to the space Odyssey. Five, four, three, two, one. I missed hosting with you, Dylan. Uh pens down, Tony will go to you. Jupiter. And you will go to Zach. Uh said Jupiter. Jupiter is correct. All right. So then your next question will come in the category of recent releases. In Megan, how do Katie's parents die at the beginning of the movie? Uh, I was going to mention this about my uh, sleep issues. My number one issue is as a teacher, I work Monday through Friday, and I tend to sleep on the weekends. But then when I sleep until like 11 on Sunday, it makes going to bed at like 10 or 11, uh, it takes a while for me to get to bed. Yeah, I, I get that. I turned in my bed like a rotisserie chicken. Five, <laughs> four, three, two. One, Zach, will go to you. I said car crash. And we will go to Tony. I said car accident. Car crash, car accident. We'll accept both. Five to four, Zach, as we head into your four, uh, sixth question. Dylan, why don't you just take the sixth question? Sure. Uh, your sixth question will come in the category of... Uh, wait, I think this is the fifth? Never mind, I'm an idiot. Musicals. <laughs> What musical instrument? What what musical features supporting performances from John Travolta, Michelle Pfeiffer, and Queen Latifah? I You're think my, you just saw my brain like <laughs> malfunction, like live on. If Dylan is a robot, we just saw him like hardwire right there. <laughs> Down below, just batteries were getting exchanged. I just power up. Just four, oh, three, <laughs> two. One suddenly I'm solo hosting. Uh, tell me, <laughs> are you? Hairspray. And we'll go to Zach. Uh, hairspray. Hairspray is correct. So we move into your pen ultimate question, which will come into the category of the 1970s. What actor plays the titular character in 1971's Clute? Uh, did you do band in high school? And if you did, did you also uh, play the clue? That was rough. No, I played the trombone, actually. Yo, let, did, you were the trombone. That's That looks awesome. Because, like, <laughs> your muscles are so toned that I can see it from that trombone. Five. Thank you. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Zach, we will go to you. I guess Michael Caine. And we will go to Tony. So Warren Beatty. Both incorrect. We were looking for Donald Sutherland. All right. So then your final question of round number one will come in the category of romance. The Todd Haynes film Carol takes place mainly in what decade? I love this movie. Yeah? Yeah. I still need to get around to it. I'm not... It from what I've seen, I'm not honestly the craziest about Todd Haynes, but I feel like I've seen the wrong ones. <laughs> I, I would like to talk with you about that later, because I'm actually quite a big fan of Todd Haynes. But five, four, three, two, one. That sounded more threatening than it should have. Uh, <laughs> Tony, we will go to you. I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Tony. We'll sorry. I said 1960s. And we will go to Zach. I said the 1950s. The 1950s. 50s is correct. So Zach will extend his lead to seven, uh, to Tony's five. But anything can happen in round number two, also known as a wheel round. Our competitors will each get a spin at the wheel, uh, at which they will receive five categories, five questions. 
and whatever category they land on, if a competitor spins a category they do not like, they do have the option to spin again, but whatever they land on, they must um, they must uh, keep for the second time. Your categories on your lovely wheel tonight are post-2000 Amir Khan films, uh, sports, 1980s, drama, Oscars, actors and actresses, comedy, and 2010s. Zach, you are in the lead. Would you like to go first or defer? Uh, I'll defer. All right. In which case, Tony, this will be your first spin. You lay the category of sports. Would you like to keep that or spin again? Uh, let's spin again. All right. You must keep whatever you land on now. You land on the category of Oscars. Yep. Uh, Dylan, would you like to give uh, Tony his questions on Oscars? Because I know how much you love that show. Oh, yes. It's my favorite TV show. Uh, so, uh, Tony, your first question in the category of Oscars. Albert Finney, Dustin Hoffman, Jack Nicholson, and Al Pacino all lost the Best Actor race to what actor? Art Carney. That is correct for two points. Now your second question. What Australian film won best costume design for movies released in 1994? We've got Bye. multiple choice. All right. Your options are A, Strictly Ballroom, B, The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, C, The Piano, or D, Mur Muriel's Wedding. Can I get a full repeat of the question? Sure thing. So that is your first repeat, I believe. Yeah. Question again. What Australian film won Best Costume Design for movies released in 1994? And your options are A, Strictly Ballroom, B, The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, or C, The Piano, or D, Muriel's Wedding? Uh, B. That is correct for one point. And the lead. Yep. Your third question. Taraji P. Henson's only nomination for Best Supporting Actress was for what film? I'm going to go multiple choice. All right. Your options are A, The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, B, Hidden Figures, C, Proud Mary, or D, Hustle and Flow? Uh, curious case of Benjamin Button. That is correct for one point. So now your penultimate question in this category. What Academy Award was won by Spotlight, Annie Hall, and Fargo? That's the original screenplay. That is correct for two points. It's funny how those movies were listed from least good to most good. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> so now your final question in this category, Tony. What film won best cinematography for films released in 2017? Oh, uh, Blade Runner 2049. That is correct for the clean sweep of the category. So with that, Dylan, I have Tony getting his score up to 13, giving up no steals. Zach still at seven. That is what I have, yep. All right, then we will bring the wheel back up for Zach's first spin. You lay in the category of post-2000 Amir Khan films. Tony's strength, would you like to keep that or spin again? Uh, definitely spin again. 
Yeah. All right, again. Smart, smart move. Whatever <laughs> you land on here. Well, a wheel wants you to have post 2000 <laughs> films. All right. Oh. Uh, Sorry. Uh, ready for your category questions in the category of post 2000 Amir Khan films? Uh, I guess so. All right. Well, uh, remember what I said about uh, this category being the bane to all of those? Uh, your first question. What Amir Khan film features performances from Jia Khan, Pradeep Rawit, and Khaled Siddiqui? Uh, multiple choice. All right, your multiple choice, choice options. Is it A, Gajini, B, Doom 3, C, Lagan, or D, Three Idiots? I'm going to guess C. As unfortunately incorrect, Tony, a chance for a one-point steal. Is it A, Gajini, B, Doom 3, C, Lagan, or D, Three Idiots? I didn't hear all the names, and I don't really want to use a repeat. Five, four, three. I'll say Lagon. That is unfortunately incorrect. We're looking for A. Gajini. Uh, your second question. In in Dobi Got Muna meets Shy when he delivers what to her house. Uh, multiple choice. Your multiple choice options. Is it A, groceries, B, art, C, furniture, or D, laundry? Uh, C. That is unfortunately incorrect, Tony. A chance for a one-point steal. Is it A, groceries, B, art, C, furniture, or D, laundry? Uh, laundry. That is correct for one point. Your third question, Zach. In Like Stars on Earth, Ram Ninbuk teaches what subject in school? Uh, I'm going to give you a free technical. Uh, in Like Stars on Earth, Ram Nikumba teaches what subject in school? Uh, multiple choice. Multiple choice options. Is it A, history, B, math, C, art, or D, English? Uh, B. That is unfortunately incorrect. Uh, Tony, a chance for a one-point steal. Is it A, history, B, math, C, art, or D, English? Art. That is correct for one point. And, yep, uh, Zach, your pen ultimate question in the category of post-2000 Amir Khan films. In Dil Dadakne Du, Kamal and Neelam invite people on a cruise to celebrate a wedding anniversary of how many years? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options, is it A, 25 years, B, 30 years, C, 35 years, or D, 40 years? I'm going to guess A. That is incorrect, Tony. A chance for a one-point steal. Is it A, 25 years, B, 30 years, C, 35 years, or D, 40 years? I'll say 35 years. That is also incorrect. We were looking for B, 30 years. And with that, we will be going into round three regardless. But, uh, Zach, your final question to the category post-2000 Amir Khan films. What is Chatter's nickname in Three Idiots? Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options. Is it A, millimeter, B, centimeter, C, silencer, or D, neuter? Uh, D. That is incorrect, Tony. A chance for a one-point steal. Is it A, millimeter, B, centimeter, C, silencer, or D, muter? Silencer. That is correct for one point. 
So with that, I have Zachary uh, still staying at seven, but Tony was able to get his score up to 16 in steals. Is that what you have, Dylan? That is what I have, yep. All right, 16 to seven, but anything can happen as we go into round three, also known as our as your pick your poison round. Uh, competitors will be able to draft categories that they themselves drafted before the match. Uh, they will go back and forth in a draft style to decide which questions they want. Uh, the categories that are uh, up for grabs tonight are Oscars, Westerns, Crime, Biopics, Classics, Animated, Scores and Soundtracks, and Action Adventure. The competitors will be picking their categories right now. All right, your competitors have chosen their categories. Tony chose the categories of biopics, crime, Oscars, and classics. And Zach chose the categories of animated, action adventure, westerns, and scores and soundtracks. Zachary, because you are behind, you do get to uh, answer your questions first. What would you like to answer for your one-pointer? Uh, scores and soundtracks. All right, and because I gave Zach his uh, questions in round two, Dylan, why don't you give them uh, give him his questions in round, round three? Sounds good. So your one point question in the category of scores and soundtracks. Who composed the score for Halloween 1978? We'll say it's 1978's Halloween. Whoops. Yeah. Five, four, uh, three. Howard Ashman? It's unfortunately incorrect. We are looking for John Carpenter. Directed the movie and also the score. All right, so now we are in a situation where Zach does have to hit every single one of his remaining questions to tie the game. So uh, which category would you like for your two-pointer, Zach? Uh, Westerns. All right. So your two-point question in the category of Westerns. Who directed the Western anthology film, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs? Five, four. Is it the Coen brothers? It is the Coen brothers for two points. Great pair of siblings, if I do say so myself. All right, so uh, Zach, uh, we are going to be moving on to your three-pointer. What category would you like for your three-pointer? Uh, animated. Sounds good. Dylan? All right. And once again, you need to hit the both of these questions to stay in the game. Your three-point question in the category of animated. The beings known as Trags and Ohms appear in what 1970s animated film? Can I get a my first repeat? Yeah, absolutely. Your question again. The beings known as Trags and Ohms appear in what 1970s animated film? Five. The only thing that's coming to mind is the is the uh, the Lord of the Rings. And your winner, by way of technical knockout, Tony Durso. We are going to be moving right into post match interviews, starting with our unfortunate second place finisher, uh, Zach. Um, it's a bitch of a strength category that Tony uses. Like every competitor I know that plays. That is like maybe the most feared category of them all. Uh, Tony is kind of an evil genius for um, uh, using it. And from what it looks like, it looks like that may have been what the side of the match tonight. How are you feeling tonight? Good. It makes me wonder if I should have gone first or not. That that was always the, the conundrum for me. But, I mean, I started out strong, and it just, yeah, that second, that second round just killed me because uh, I had really never heard of the guy. So... Um, but I gave it the best effort I could. So, uh, congrats to Tony. Yeah. Uh, genuinely one of the biggest questions I think coming into a match is, do you spin first or, or defer, especially if you are someone who is superstitious, 
But uh, this does bring an end to your run in the tournament. When you do come back, who do you hope to play next? For me, I just, I'm I'm hoping to just play anybody. I'm always up for competing and just honing my skills. So just anybody. That is fair. Well, uh, thank you so much for uh, coming out tonight, Zach. But we are going to be moving on to our first place finisher tonight. Tony, uh, great showing uh, coming into this round one of a tournament. I would expect you were hoping for uh, some sort of uh, technical knockout or knockout or just a win in general. Must have felt pretty good. How are you feeling tonight? Uh, feeling good. I uh, I mean, obviously, the main thing is the win. I mean, the other stuff's just gravy. Uh, you know, kind of like just a couple misses in uh, round one that I was like, ah, geez, you know, like just, you know, couldn't pull it kind of thing. But, uh, you know, Zach, Zach played great. I mean, round I could not have asked for a better round two frankly so uh that's really what made the difference and when you're down nine going into round three it, it's very unlikely that you're going to come back yeah the the nine point cushion is always a very nice cushion to have uh going into round three but uh this does mean you are going to be moving forward into the platinum ticket tournament you are now only one match away from a title match, you are going to be facing either the number six seed, six seed Jordan Pierce Owens, or the number seven seed Jacoby the Barbarian Bancroft. Of those two competitors, who do you hope to see in your next match? Oh, geez. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll I'll play whichever one. I mean, whoever. I'm not too picky. Always a fun. Uh, Always a fun uh, mentality to have. Uh, we'll they're both later. good players, so. Absolutely. Thank you so much for showing up tonight, Tony. Uh, as we move into final thoughts, uh, Dylan, what are your final thoughts on this match? Yeah, man, I mean, you can't you can't help but feel bad for Zach in that scenario because he was legit doing fantastic coming out of round one. Like, Tony, we were hyping him up a lot in the pre-match interviews because he is he deser he's deserving of that hype. He's a great player. And to be up two points coming out of round number one, skip, scoring seven of eight, fantastic. Yeah, that's the thing about Tony, man. It's his his strengths are just game changers whenever they come up. Like it's really hard to prepare for and it's hard to, you know, come back from when also Tony gets his preferred category on mm -hmm. the spin. So it's really rough luck for Zachary. But again, that performance in round one just shows I think just how good of overall knowledge he has and how much potential he has. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think both competitors showed a great share of knowledge, but congrats to Tony for getting that victory. But uh from everyone here at Multiplex Movie Melee, from me, uh from me, from Dylan, from Tony, from Zach, uh from everyone at Multiplex Movie Melee, have a good night. Goodbye. Storm in the castle. Think it'll work? If it takes a Bye.